What up, Cosmetic family? Hey, welcome to the Cosmetic Podcast. Cosmetic means being a person or thing that gives rise to a phenomenon that is dynamic or energized. We're talking topics and telling the truth. I'm Roger Ross. And I'm Steve. So today we have some amazing individuals with us. And we are talking about hot fun in the summer with two cakes in a rear. I am so excited. Woo, 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 woo. Installment um, of the Innovation Series, partnering with YMCA of the USA. Welcome to the Cosmetic Podcast, lovelies. Yay! Thank you guys for joining us. And so we're going to just uh, take this whole deep dive in. Uh, so oh, I see what you did there. Dive, yeah, summer. Summer. Yeah, I see what you did you there. Know, That's cute. Like yeah. if I was swimming. Yeah, okay, we got it. It's cute. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so... You guys have been involved in this uh, whole Summer Design Institute. Mm. Can you guys kick us off and talk to us about this opportunity for, for teens just to learn about this design and this whole process? The design process, yes. Sure. Well, I'll kick it off. My name is Kate Gross. I support teen programs throughout the YMCA of the Triangle. And this is summer number two, working with um, Design for America, which Kate Rose will talk about in just a moment. But really the hope for working with Design for America and bringing together a group of interns that we are supporting. These are rising juniors, rising seniors in high school, and rising freshmen in college. Really the hope is that they explore passions in a way that brings everybody to the table to create innovation and change and truly become change makers. So mm -hmm. I'll kick it over to Kate Rose to talk about the role that DFA plays or Design for America. But um, when we talk about the Summer Institute and designing uh, processes to help problem spaces, um, we want the YMCA to be known as a hub and a resource and innovators for that. So Kate, can you talk a little bit more about Design for America? Yeah, totally. Thanks, Kate. Um, I'm also Kate, <laughs> as mentioned. Hey, I'm Kate. A <laughs> With the most excellent pink hair and wonderful background. I know, might I nice add. Oh, thank yes. you. Maybe you too this summer if you go pink. Um, but yeah, I'm a design coach on this current year long or this current summer project and like Kate and Rhea I was also on the project last summer and I'm with working with Design for America which is a nonprofit that teaches community-centered design um, mm -hmm. as a tool for individual growth and learning and so this summer Design for America will be working with the like about I think eight or so change makers at the YMCA who are in this change maker program um, to learn how to apply the design process to address the social issue that they're passionate about. But also something I'm excited about is like the ways that they're also going to explore personal growth and personal learnings as they're applying the design process. Um, and just like from my personal experience, I've learned so much from working with community partners, applying the design process. And like, I think it's gonna be a really awesome space to work together this summer and like reflect on yeah, reflect together on like what the experience is like and how it's going to change and grow all of us. Of that, this structured way of helping teens design around what they're passionate about, right? Like really centering that and helping them hone in on it and use innovation to get to these really. And I love the idea that we call them change makers. I know. That's like that is becoming like. so prevalent yeah. now in the world. I love that idea that we don't just say teens or that. Right. We call them change makers. And we have a change maker with us. So yes. Let's the one Listen, and only. It's this, uh, hold on, let me. If, if I understand correctly, like you're a freshman, you you double major. Mm. Yes. Science and economics, like and at Duke, <laughs> at not Duke. like at some online school we never heard of. Wow. Like at Duke University, <laughs> right? Now, just a, just a small talk. university down the road. <laughs> oh, small, down the road. I, you know what? Since it's so small. The this is man that I know that um, I think he might have retired, but I think he still has some influence. Um, his name is um, Mike and uh, <laughs> coaches the basketball team. Do you think that you could hook no, me up with some tickets? Probably not going to happen. I can think about it. I can see if I can pull some strings. Oh, Rhea, don't that's don't what I'm talking about, Rhea. I know she, that's why she's smart. I got you. That's why she double majored. Not because she's double majoring in yeah. economics and computer science, but because she might be able to get to a basketball Now, program. those two degrees right there sound like you're about to change the world. Talk to Absolutely. me about being a change maker. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm glad to be a part of the team. So 
just to kind of introduce my role, last summer, I myself was a Bank of America student leader working at the YMCA. Um, and my role was really being a part of the service project, being a change maker, working with a team of other students um, to really see where we think that we can contribute as teens, as change makers in the community in the Y space. Um, and so part of that process involved with using the design framework that Kate and the DFA team provided, um, how to kind of start with a problem, where to research, how can we kind of build on what we already know, use the expertise of people like Kate Gross um, and other amazing Y employees to help us figure out where we can really help make change. Um, and so what we actually ended up doing was creating a mental health leadership training for other teens. Um, we wanted to focus, this idea was actually inspired by our own personal experiences um, throughout COVID. Online school was not the best experience, the most ideal experience, um, especially as high schoolers. Either. Yeah. <laughs> oh, not for parents either. <laughs> Absolutely. No, and, and missing out on like big events such as graduation, prom, all of those big parts that are really fundamental, I think. Um, in developing teens and a big part of, I guess, childhood um, before you set off and be independent in college. And so we wanted to see how we can touch on that, um, make sure that we check in with each person individually and make sure that each teen has the space that they need to grow personally, but also keeping in mind their mental and emotional health, um, which is kind of where the idea stemmed from and why we chose that area space. Um, and with Kate's help, we were able, both Kate's help, <laughs> um, we were able to really make that process work um, so yeah, we're really excited about that. And I'm just glad to be back here for summer number two, helping the next round of interns um, and facilitate facilitating their project and what they're passionate about. So I'm just excited to see what they come up with and hoping I can help the most that I can. Awesome. Nice. Kate and Kate, can you guys talk a little bit about what is what is that process to get to uh, to get to this change? Mm -hmm. Which Kate first? Uh, let's go Kate Rose. Kate Rose. You kind of sound like it was like we were <laughs> like uh, in Las Vegas. It was gambling. Eh, just stick the name on. Kate Rose. Come on down. You're the next contestant. <laughs> you said Kate Rose. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, yeah, it was really cool to get to work with your team, Rio, last summer and see how y'all applied design process to, you know, arrive at this solution and explore mental health as a challenge space. But yeah, I guess to describe the process and how you how you use it to end up at a solution that actually works for people. I think the most important thing about it is that it centers, it's like human-centered design, so like centering people's needs at the core of the solution, but also like centering people in the design process, I think is like in some equally important, if not more important, um, like having a design team that involves both people that you know are passionate about like exploring mental health, for example, but also people who have been directly impacted. Um, uh, like Leah, as you mentioned, like y'all yeah. going to school virtually and like facing a lot of those challenges firsthand. I feel like that maybe all will put you in a really good position to develop something that is actually um, going to be effective or like rooted in your experiences. Um, yeah. And I, I think I see design just like as a tool of a tool of learning more about what people's needs are so you can come up with an idea that, that best meets them. Mm -hmm. I like that. And, Gay, and Kate Gross, in that regard, as the director of association teen engagement, using that process, which I think is the game changer, not just the folks who are designing the process, but including the folks who are going to be impacted by whatever that design is. Tell me how that supports your work for YMCA at a triangle. Yeah, such a good question. I think any time we bring together new groups of young leaders, we need to assess what are their needs and how we how can we support them. Yeah. So often in the YMCA, we have innovative programming and innovation doesn't need to be daunting. It can be just thinking differently about a situation or an opportunity um, and then using really measured steps to get after how yeah. Kate Rose said so well to have human-centered uh, design processes. And so when I think about how it loops back in with my work um, with teen engagement, whether it be membership um, or teen programs, I think about how can we ensure we're listening and really listening to our young leaders about what their needs are and, and bringing together the right people to help problem solve with them. Mm. And so, um, I think about that as well. Like, I think I said this before, but um, 
as a, as a Y professional going on 10 years within the Y, which in the movement is actually not that long, which is so funny. Like I think about other Y leaders, especially within the triangle, but um, I think about how this has so benefited my professional development. Um, going through a process and asking others for feedback is really important. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like getting down the line and saying, actually, this isn't what we wanted and this isn't what we needed. And yeah. then also assessing and being really critical in terms of, um, are we actually getting after the problem that we're trying to solve for? And mm. so um, I see this just being a thread through all of the work that I do in the teen space as well as throughout our organization. And so um, innovation is exciting, but it's just an idea if we don't put some legs behind it and really um, move the work ahead. I agree. I agree. Absolutely yeah. a process that's transferable. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So, so the mental health space is, you know, is, you know, we just came out of uh, mental health awareness uh, month. Um, what did you guys see mm. you know, the whole process that you did with the teens? Uh, maybe Rhea, Rhea you can uh, talk to this. What type of success did you see in going through the process and then some outcomes on the other side of implementing? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I can talk about more um, the creation side. I know that's what our team worked on, and I'll hand it off to Kate um, to talk about the implementation side. But for us, I would say really making sure that we took in that input um, that was valuable for everyone. So for example, even interviewing ourselves um, and testing the product on ourselves was really important um, because we realized that if we ourselves as teens are not going to be able to use this, if we don't find it useful, then there's no really point <laughs> in trying to put it out there for the rest of the teams, yeah. Um, yeah. especially given you know our experience, like Kate, both Kates were mentioning earlier, why that feedback is so valuable. Um, and so in the creation of this product, um, we essentially went through large amounts of interviews um, and really did prototype testing on each other um, to see how that played out for us. Um, and I, I'm, our personal experience, personally, was great. I think we walked through all the separate activities, things, things like being genuine and intentional in how we speak to each other, asking questions like, how are you? But not just thinking, not just giving surface level answers, not just saying, oh, yeah, I'm good. Like, it's normal. That's like kind of the basic level answer everyone gives, but really caring about what the other person feels. Um, and that was just a great kind of exercise for us to do within ourselves that also made us mindful of our own actions in just our daily daily routines. I mean, even outside of the why, just thinking about school, college, how we really interact with others. Um, I'm just glad that we were able to be a part of that experience because it put into perspective how we, on a daily basis, interact with people that we don't even know um, and how we can kind of build those relationships going forward, even outside of the summer. Um, yeah, that was kind of a long answer <laughs> to the question no, that you're perfect. asking. But that's that's excellent answer. Before we go back to the uh, implementation part, let me ask you, so you went through the process. How mm -hmm. are you uh, experiencing that in school? Because you just wrapped up, a, wrapped up a school year. Did you, yeah. uh, did that play into pr any process uh, yeah. while you've been in school? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's a great question. I would say a big part of what I've carried forward, the skill set I've, I've carried forward was not just um, thinking about my interactions with people and how to build relationships with people from a different standpoint. Um, for example, really listening, really listening, <laughs> um, and making sure that I'm understanding what another individual is saying, but also that design process that I really carry forward. How, when I see a problem, how to tackle it. Um, not just kind of jumping right to the bat, kind of thinking about what I want to do immediately, solutions, but how we kind of think about where the project development starts and how we can implement it forward. Um, I see that a lot. I mean, in computer science and economics classes, we have all these big projects that we're working together as a team. And I'm just glad that I was able to bring that skill set that I learned from the DFA framework that they built um, to those spaces um, throughout the school year and just sharing that as much as possible. So I definitely would say that I've carried a lot of great strengths um, through that end, but also just you know communication, leadership, um, how to really be out there and making sure I'm utilizing the most of these different skill sets possible. Yeah, awesome. that awesome. is so, uh, Kate, you must be so proud, like as a former <laughs> team person myself, to actually see what you were trying to do with, with change makers and young people, to actually see it, like take root and know that it was useful for them. Oh, that's did so you, excellent. Did you say as a, as a former team person? Um, as a director, because oh, I'm very talk, close in age. 
age to a teenager. Like, seem like if you put some years in between that, you probably can't even use formula. Like you you know? focusing on the wrong stuff. You just, you just focusing on the wrong <laughs> stuff right now. <laughs> so, Kate, can you talk about? Uh, I don't know, have you guys seen any success Which uh, of the uh, of we the We got project? two cakes in a reel. Which cake? I know we got two cakes oh. in a reel, oh. but the one who want, needs to respond, I bet you they respond. Let's see. I want to bet you a quarter. <laughs> I'm not gonna hold out hey. only because we got hey. a timeline. <laughs> I think it was me. I'll I'll take that one. I'll take that one, Kate Rose. Um, yeah, I mean, I think. Listen, I think Rhea and and the team did a phenomenal job in going through the process. And really, I, I'm so thankful she highlighted that that self reflective piece because, yeah. gosh, that's so important is to have the self awareness and also understand how actions can really impact others. I think that's what the why has done for so long. Like so many key points that Rhea mentioned, whether knowingly or not, how to genuinely listen, how to have a conversation with somebody and, and hear what they're saying um, to, you know, interact with folks and, and try to be supportive in challenging times. Like we do that all the time at the why, but Rhea was with us for a short amount of time and, and got that. And so again, going back to, this work is so intertwined in the YMCA movement. It's just identifying it and being intentional. And so we were mm -hmm. able to implement it with the teen programs that we have. Um, and I felt as though our young leaders had the response that Rhea and her team were looking for, which is how am I showing up to be the best version of myself or 1% better for my peers? How am I able to lead in a way that's aware about how my actions and others' actions impact a space? And so. I say all of that is in yes, so proud of Rhea and her team. And when she emailed me um, this winter, she was like, "Do you mind if we if I come back?" And I was like, "Absolutely." And so it's been really fun for her to come back in and serve a different role in our relationship building in a different way. And so yes, so proud to see your little birdies like pop out of the nest and like get the <laughs> wings and fly right. <laughs> Fly, baby bird. Just go. Oh, excellent. And so, Can I so, drop you out of the nest? Nah. Just stop talking to me. <laughs> Is that the sound I would make? Can you drop me out of the nest? That's so terrible. I'm going to talk to Kate, Kate Rose right now because that was terrible. Um, so Kate Rose, in, in your space, in, in the, the, the stuff that you do with Design for America, how are you guys um, excited about this partnership with the YMCA and using what you guys bring to the table and that, that level of expertise around the, the actual design process, but then the YMCA bringing to the table the proximity and the access that we have to young change makers to really make this thing take root? Ooh, I really love that question. Mm. Yeah, I think when I think about this summer and like the ways that we're going to be working together to teach the design process and like work with type, like change maker teams who are working through it, I just think about how much we've already learned from working with the YMCA and working with change makers. I feel like change makers have such um, such a like deep and nuanced understanding already of so many different social issues and like the way reflecting with them as we work through applying the design, the tools of the design process together has just, I think it's really nuanced, like our understanding of the design process too. And like what it, what it means to be a change maker, for example, was a really big question on our last project. And then something that we, we were always discussing with student teams is like, what, what power does that word hold? Um, is it like relevant? Do change makers identify as change makers? Um, change making might be a student activist and it might also be just like students having a place to go and connect with one another after school like it just that's like one example of something I learned from change makers and so I'm really excited to work with like we we met them this past week actually the the change makers in this summer cohort they're all really cool and have really like diverse skill sets and interests and yeah I think like I'm going to learn a lot from them just as we're working through the design process together, which is kind of like more of my comfort level and, or like an area where I'm comfortable and what we're teaching. Also stuff. existential, like, do they know that they're change makers? Do they identify that way? That is, that whole reciprocal learning thing is amazing. I love that, Kate. Like, like so much you learn from me regularly, Kate. 
<laughs> it's that awkward silence in here. You like you're supposed to respond, but uh, I'm gonna hold off on that. Miss Changemaker. <laughs> I want to talk to you again in terms of you went through the process. Uh, now you have come back to work with the young people. Well, uh, I mean, what's exciting you about about that? Are you like an OG now, Rhea? I guess I guess I am, and I'm glad to be it. <laughs> no, it's it's great. I mean, coming back this summer, um, my goal really is to use my experience last summer and optimize on the parts that I really personally enjoyed and felt like I got the most out of and kind of put that into a box and give that back to the next round of interns. Um, and so a lot of my role it actually involves on how can we use those experiences um, and turn it into an in-person setting now, which is amazing um, because we were virtual last summer. And how can we actually make sure that we're helping interns professionally develop on a different level using external programming that we can do in person? Um, for example, now we get to have like C-suite executive conversations in person, which is a whole nother ball game, meeting face to face, having those interactions, having additional programming where we have workshops with interns to make sure, you know, how do we interact with people professionally? How do we kind of update our resumes? How do we have these great LinkedIn's and just small like skills that I think are really valuable for peers um, to have and high schoolers to have that I wish that maybe I could have had <laughs> um, at one level. So that's kind of my goal. I'm trying to put in as much um, work that I can to really make it the most useful and valuable experiences for interns, not just in the community service aspect, but also in a larger, more holistic perspective, um, just making it the most you know, well-rounded um, experience that it can be for them so they can carry those skills forward like I was able to um, in my experience in college. So yeah. <laughs> I, love um, I have to brag on Rhea a little bit. She continually comes up with innovative ways to expand the foundations that have been laid. And so I think about how um, Rhea connecting with her peers, connecting with her network and seeing how this all, I almost feel like um, having an alumni pulls the curtain back and she's like, I see how the dots need to be connected now. And so yeah. in just this week, I mean, we've planned ahead of time, but in just this week, you know, the, the programming that she has added to it is only enhancing the experience to again, as she said so well, create that holistic experience for our leaders to then go out and do whatever it is they may be passionate about. Um, and so it's just exciting to see and to, and hopefully, you know, selfishly for the triangle, I want to scale this work. Like how do we scale innovation, holistic programming to support a young person's passion in whatever field it is? I mean, I think that's really like my secret plan of like, this is great for six young leaders. How do we, how do we scale this for the triangle region, which is rapidly growing? So um, I mean, that's, that's, that's the magic of it all. That's it's like, the magic. You, know, yeah. you identifying and knowing that you can use young people's ideas today. Uh, and listen to their feedback, because right. that's a critical part of the design mm -hmm. process. The fact that Rhea can come in and help recalibrate after there's already been planning, you know, back in the day, we were yeah. like, oh, no, we already planned it. Yeah. We well, already did it. Yeah. And and to that point, I think I challenge and I continue to challenge myself and, and, and those I work with and, and for and around is like, how do we look at the work that the Y has done for so many years in mm -hmm. such an amazing way and be supportive of what it's done, but innovative and in moving forward? Our young leaders of today do not need the same programming. They don't want it. They don't, they're, frankly, they, they're, they're above it in some senses. Yeah. And how yeah. do we give them the tools to be successful in 2022 and beyond. And so how do we look at those critical hallmark programs and say, great foundation, we've got to challenge though. We've got to teach you about challenge spaces. We've got to question like, is this relevant today? Right. And, and right. I find sometimes the answer is no. And tradition should not be the reason why we don't let go and innovate. And so that is my brief soapbox. <laughs> and this is my time where I interject my brief soapbox. Are you going to talk about esports? You, oh my God. you know, Keith, you know, you've got a fellow esports. Now I don't play esports. I don't own a game system, but we run, I run the okay. esports program for the triangle. Yes. Not to boast. We're pretty good. I'm going to say it no, here now. Kate, don't go to the dark side. Kate. Do you know that Keith 
created esports? Like, I, the, he's I, not like I, a content I, expert. No, he created it. Right? And I heard that at one time that he <laughs> was the O. Oh, we're talking about OGs here. He was the O O O O G. You got multiple O's. Hey, but that's all right. But being an OG, knowing what young people want yeah. today, yeah. not not need, right? But it's, it's want today mm -hmm. for their needs. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the space that we are in with uh, esports. And so um, understanding that, I, I'll give you an example. Went to uh, DreamHack. Y'all know what DreamHack is? DreamHack is like a conference of esports and these card games that young people are playing. And was there at uh, DreamHack and I went and experienced uh, the Air Force, uh, their uh, mobile unit. The Air Force, our military, are trying to recruit our young people to come in via video games. And so on this uh, on this 18 wheel that this gaming unit that they had was all this VR stuff. And when I tell you that if I was 18, I, I'm just a couple of years away from it. So, you know, I can't go back. And, you know, they won't accept me right now. But uh, if I was just a couple more years younger than 18, I would be in the military today because it enticed me in such a way, engaged me in such a way like, okay, I want to do this for real. And the thing is, is that while we think that VR is a game, like that is what they, that is what they use. Mm -hmm. And like, we, this is what we got to put in the hands of our young people. Yeah. And so the days are gone that Video gaming is just, you know, the overweight kid with a bag of chips to his side, you know, mm. playing video games. Like you have professional sports teams out here that young people are getting paid millions of millions dollars, of dollars. To, yes. be able to play what we call a game. And but the skill sets that they use in doing that are so valuable, so useful today that we got to get with the program. And like, yes, I appreciate soccer. Yes, I appreciate football. Yes, I appreciate, you know, anything with the ball to play. But you know what? Those skill sets that you use on a football field, which I which I play football, like, I'm not sure how I use those skills. You know, I could tackle somebody. <laughs> Why are you serious right now? <laughs> but the skills that the young people use, man, I mean, we're talking about controlling the controllers. I mean, drones, that is how we're going to war. Drones, I mean, war is not nowadays that you, this- Just getting this big tank and run, No, run, run, we run, just, yeah. we're going to get this, this uh, drone out. and we drop, dropping it on. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. uh, that's my soapbox for a moment, just to understand what young people are. This yeah. O-O-O-G knows about- And there's another O there. She gave you like four or five O's. Well, and to that point, Keith, and I think this connects the dots and innovation that we're doing across the triangle and the movement in general, it's like- Gosh, what has the Y done for years is the character development piece, which is so strong and tried and true. And there are pieces that um, can be infused into all the innovative programming that yeah. we're doing. I think about your example, Keith, and I, I don't think you're alone in saying there's this um, kind of assumption that the gamer is the kid in the basement eating a bag of chips. What a great opportunity to connect with that young person and give them the character development that the Y remains yeah. to be really solid in that space. And so when I think about how we're innovating in the triangle and innovating in other spaces of the movement, like how do we know um, what to hold on to, what we what can be transferable in any space, like our character development piece, and how do we know what needs to be reimagined in a way using a really critical design thinking process like Design for America? Yeah, I, you know, Dr. Tasha Johnson said it, and it's the best I've ever heard. Our job is to prepare our young change makers for their 21st century, not ours. Yeah, I, Kate, I love it. Kate Rose, can you speak to, uh, I mean, you guys have been doing this work for a while and you're deep into this space. Can you just talk about maybe two or three things uh, from the innovation space that you guys have seen that has been phenomenal? Mm. Ooh, yeah, what a, what a cool question. I'm also just as reflecting as y'all are sharing out. Um, I feel like this, in, you know, the innovative processes of the why that you're describing are like the core of core of design for me. I feel like Rhea having you at the center of like helping design this new program is that, you know, that point we were speaking to earlier around like having people who have experienced a program like actually be the designers of it because you're kind of like the expert in that space. Yeah. Um, yeah. So just, yeah, just to add to that dialogue. But yeah, to also answer your question, Keith. Um, yeah, one project, I mean, we've got a lot of awesome projects going on right now that I'm, I'm excited about. One that's gotten like a lot of student interest and excitement is a project we're doing with uh, Unilever. Um, and it's focused around 
it's working with like a skincare company actually looking at like skincare for melanin rich skin and it's um we've been doing scoping workshops over the last like semester or so and it's been really cool to get just a lot of different students on these calls and um hear directly from like college students and high schoolers change makers essentially um like what questions they have about skincare and like what's on their minds what issues feel relevant to them you know speaking to what y'all are mentioning like it's important to listen listen to young people um, and yeah. really really deeply listen and not just listen but like inform the direction of a program or like where you're going based on what you hear um that kind of like accountability to what you hear so I'm really excited for seeing seeing that work going on alongside um, this Wine Save project this summer because I think they'll, yeah, just getting to see like how that challenge space is shaping up will inform the Wine Save project a lot as well. So that's just one example I'm also excited about. Nice, awesome, nice. Awesome. Well, right before we wrap up, we'll we'll let Ria have the closing words. If you had to talk to your peers and the one OGs, not the five O. Oh over here but just the one OGs and you have to talk to them about being involved in the design process or um the things that were like what would you tell them to encourage them to get in get in with your YMCA get involved in the change process like it's not only helping to change something you're also changed as well what, what would you tell them yeah I mean I'm honored to have the last words um I would say personally coming into the YMCA experience last summer I was like you know I'm just like 18 years old um, I'm gonna maybe do like a small thing and leave but it's so much more than that um, you're coming in you're able to it, even even no matter how young you are no matter what kind of experiences you have in the past you can do whatever you want to do whatever you set your mind to especially given the support that we're getting for teens today and really valuing their voice so each teen has such an important voice. I know Kate Gross and I and the interns were talking about this past week with teen advisory boards with C-suite executives um, to really help with that decision making. Um, so never underestimate the power that one individual teenager might have um, because they are change makers for a reason and they're called that for a reason. Um, and not only will, I mean, I guess you, teen change maker who I'm talking to, <laughs> um, be able to come out of that experience with a, a significant amount of personal and professional development, um, but also being able to really see that tangible impact that you made and be like, hey, I did that and I can do more as long as I put my mind to it. Um, so really just being confident and knowing that you can do so much more um, based on just what your goals are, what your expectations are. I think that's really important to keep in mind. But, yes, <laughs> and that is why you had the last word, drops the mic. Thank you, Kate Gross. Thank you, Kate Rose, and absolutely thank you, Rhea Cabra, um, and thank you all for listening to Cosmetic. On this episode called Hot Fun in the Summer. Don't say the other part of the word. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe and listen to us weekly. And look, while you're out there, don't be shy. Give us a five-star review. And as always, be dynamic, be phenomenal, be cosmetic. cosmetic.